We are currently considering specifications in the Z-Plane with the aim of designing a discrete time controller that complies with these requirements. In this video, we look at specifying the transient accuracy of a discrete time system. The approach we take to specify the transient response of a system has two steps. We first specify the dominant poles in the S-plane and then convert the dominant poles to the Z-plane. Let's look at each of these steps in more detail. The transient response of a system is usually characterized in terms of its step response. For the step response, we apply a step to the input of the system and we observe the output. A hypothetical step response is shown here. We then measure different quantities to characterize the response. The rise time is the time period from the application of the step for the response to reach the final value for the first time. The peak time is the time period to reach the peak of the step response. The overshoot is the peak value minus the final value divided by the final value. And the settling time is the time period until the response is reduced to be within a certain distance of the final value. To specify the pole locations, we assume that the behavior of the system is dominated by a single complex pole pair and we calculate the corresponding transient response parameters. We describe the dominant behavior by this second order transfer function where omega n is the natural frequency and zeta is the damping. For this second order system, we can calculate the rise time in terms of the damping and the natural frequency as follows. The peak time as shown here, the overshoot as shown here, and the 2% settling time as shown here. By specifying two of these transient response parameters, we can calculate the damping and natural frequency, which specifies the desired dominant poles. We can visualize it on the S-plane as follows. A specific damping corresponds to these red lines radiating from the origin, and a specific natural frequency corresponds to this blue semicircle centered at the origin. The poles with the desired damping and natural frequency are then located at the intersections of these curves. Let's now look at the conversion of these desired dominant poles to the Z-plane. We use the mapping Z equal to E to the ST, where T is the sampling period. The continuous time poles are written in terms of the damping and the natural frequency as shown here. When we put these poles through the mapping, we get a complex pole pair with magnitude e to the power minus zeta omega n t and angles plus or minus omega n t times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. If we call the magnitude r and the angle theta, we can visualize these poles on the z-plane as complex numbers with magnitude r and angle theta. These poles now lie at the intersection of the red spiral, which is the constant damping curve, and the blue constant natural frequency curve. This two-step procedure allows us to specify the transient response parameters and then calculate the desired dominant pole locations. Of course, if the system contains zeros and other poles, then the behavior of the full system might differ from that of the dominant poles, and it might be necessary to iteratively adjust the pole and zero locations until the full system's transient response is satisfactory.